One of the tools that's useful for us in the software engineering world is a tool called Gradle. Gradle is a um, tool that helps us basically to define builds and to build projects and to define them in such a way that it's easy to transfer the project definition from one person to another. So in this video, what I'm going to do is walk you through how you can use Gradle with IntelliJ to actually work and debug on a get, given set of source code that's been given to you. So let's get started here. So to begin with, we've got over here on the left just a very, very plain old program here. And this is a Ignore that comment because that is actually the wrong comment for it. What this is, it's a very, very trivial file copy program. So what it's going to do is copy from the source to the output file, read the arguments in, got a scanner to read one line of text in at a time, and it's going to write that line back out to the next um, line. And I need to change this around as well because little bug that I see before I get into that here. Okay, so this is all set to go. It's going to go through, do that so long as there's a next line, and then it will close things down. So basically, again, essentially a copy. Now, this source is living inside of this Java main directory here, and there's a path, msoeedu, that gets us into that, that source code. So it's inside of the MSOE package that is in the Java source code directory underneath basically source for the main part of the program. Now the reason this is inside of directory called Java is with Gradle you can actually have multiple languages inside of a project. We're not going to go to that capability right now but it is something that's there. This resources directory in this project is empty but this is where you can put resources that your code is dependent upon to work and we'll see later on how that can be useful for us. The test directory is also empty. This is where we would put JUnit or testNG tests for our code as well as where we would put resources within our project. Now inside of the Gradle file here I have this build.gradle and what this says is that I'm basically building an application where the the main class is msoe.edu main program. Happens to be this program that's right here. That's the main class. Right now I don't have any dependencies or repositories and what I want to do is I want to build an application out of this. So I'm going to build a Java application. In this particular case runs from the command line, but that's what I'm trying to accomplish constructing. So you can see some of the very, very preliminary uh, setup for this project here, the way it is, is put together. Um, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and bring this into IntelliJ. So what I'm going to do is bring over IntelliJ here and I am going to go and open the directory that this is living in, which is this Gradle import video. And you can see this has been checked into Git, so there's a Git ignore, and there's some of those things that you're familiar with as well. I'm going to just bring this Gradle import in into a new window here, and we see that it is going through doing this, and it has actually put together and built the code with Gradle. Um, so it is completed importing it and we see we have Java our resources our main program exists right here um, it has set up all the dependencies for us to, to work with so now we've got this and I can build this cannot find symbol TA okay ah that's because it should be TA it should be text line so you can see that I can debug when I have bad code in my demonstration example there we go. It built successfully. You can see that it has created, compiled it, and it's all ready to go there. Now, this works off of command line prompts. So it's intended to be something that you would run from your command line console. You'll see how that can be done later on. What I'd like to do is show you how you would run this right now in IntelliJ and how you can use some of the arguments associated with running command line programs. So if I just run this right now, what's going to happen is these arguments, which are passed into main, are going to have a length of zero. So we're going to go into this um, 
part right here and exit it out because there's no arguments being passed in. So let me run the main program and as it executes here, you see it print out usage, copy, source, definitions file, output file because there is no configuration and no arguments that are set in. What I'd like to do is take this text file that I have in here, Project Gutenberg ebook of a Christmas carol, perfectly legitimate, wonderful novel to be using as a test case here. And what I want to do is I want to use this program to make a copy of it. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to modify my run configuration. So this is my run configuration that I have for this main program. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass arguments in that are going to appear in this string entry right here. So my first argument is going to be the name of the file, a Christmas Carol dot text like so. So this is matching the name of this file. And I'm going to say that my output is going to be text copy dot text. So what will happen is now when I run this main program is going to get passed in these various parameters and it will make a copy of the program. So I can set this up. Now if I run main program, we see that we didn't get that error and we see that I have a text copy that is here that is now the Project Gutenberg E program all um, copied over. The other thing I can do here, let me put a breakpoint right here, is I can take now with that is I can all and go in and debug it. So if I start my debugger up here, momentarily we will see this starting up here allowing me to debug and you'll see that we are at this part of the breakpoint. So we've stopped right here at line 16 and if you look at my args you can see that arg0 is the string a Christmas Carol dot text. arg1 is text copy. So this is a standard array of strings. I can then proceed on here. We'll see that the file copies output file names get set up like so. We create our new input file. We start our scanner up and we will just go through here looping all the way through the program like so. And since we know that this works successfully, I'm just going to let it continue running here, resuming F9, and we exit out of the program again, making our text copy. All right, so what have you seen at this point in time? So you've seen basically a very, very high level look at a Gradle structure, how you can bring that Gradle project into IntelliJ so that you can work off of it, and then how you can actually use command line arguments. This gives you a couple of the key things that you'll need to get started early on in this software verification class. So I'm going to bring this video then to a conclusion.